Southern Girl Scouts of Kentucky, Anna here. We're in my kitchen today, and that means we're going to talk about one of my most favorite things to do, which is cooking. I have put together a couple of my recipes that I'm going to teach you how to make to earn some of the badges uh, for cooking. We have brownies, juniors, cadets, seniors, and ambassadors. This will probably touch on some things for you as well, but I would suggest that you maybe uh, go onto the VTK or if you have the girl's guide, look it up and see what type of uh, requirements this will earn uh, to get you your uh, dinner party for your ambassadors and locavore for the seniors. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about the brownies, juniors, and cadets. I'll go ahead and read through this so you know right off the bat what badges uh, you'll earn or at least which steps of each badge you will earn so you know what you need to do in your free time. So let's go through these. Brownies. Uh, we are going to hit steps two, three, and four. So we're going to make a savory snack. We're going to make some hummus. We're going to make a sweet snack. We're going to make a Greek yogurt parfait. And then a snack for energy, hummus or parfait, definitely fall into that. But if you need to make a snack for energy to maybe hit the trail, you should probably stick with some gorp, which is good old raisins and peanuts, instead of packing a refrigerated parfait. Uh, juniors, we are going to hit all five. So number one, invite a cook. Hello, here I am. I am not a professional, but I cook every day for my family. So I feel like I could probably give you a little bit of information and some guidance on cooking. Number two, whip up a great breakfast. That Greek yogurt parfait again, definitely a great breakfast because it is very good for you. Uh, number three, make a healthy lunch or dinner. So here we go into my Middle Eastern stuff. We're going to make falafel. We are going to make chicken shawarma, and we're also going to make my favorite lentil soup. Uh, number four, make a healthy dessert. Again, you could eat this parfait for a dessert. I do sometimes, it's delicious. And number five, make a salad with a protein, starch, and a veggie. So after we have cooked all of these uh, delicious meals, we're going to actually put them together to make kind of like a power salad using uh, the chicken shawarma, the hummus, and then we'll chop up some veggies and put that in there too. Cadets, step one, make a dish from another country. Again, all of this is popular Mediterranean Middle Eastern cuisine. Uh, we're going to hit step number three, which is whip up a dish from another time period. So let me go ahead and say this because I learned some new things. Hummus dates back to the 13th century in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Very cool. Chicken shawarma, um, goes all the way back to the 19th century from the Ottoman Empire. And then when we talk about our uh, falafel, the origin is kind of controversial. Um, read a few things. It might be about a thousand years old, um, dating back to Egypt, but some people speculate that it could actually go all the way back to 3100 BC. But you should know it didn't become popularized in the Americas until about 1970. So that's step three for your cadets. Step four, take a processed food and make it yourself. That's one of the steps of the requirement. Or the second step is, or try a recipe for a special diet. So our hummus is going to fall into both of those categories. So um, processed food, a lot of you probably have store-bought processed hummus in your refrigerator. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad for you, but you have to read your labels because sometimes when you buy things that has artificial things and sometimes even things you can't even pronounce in there. Whereas if you make it at home, you know exactly what it is that you're going to be eating. And then um, as far as a recipe for a special diet, when I mentioned the Mediterranean diet, it's not necessarily a diet like you're counting calories or the Atkins diet or something like that. The Mediterranean diet is more of a healthy way of eating. So your Meals are going to be more plant-based. You're going to be eat more whole grains. If you're going to eat meat, maybe try some fish or definitely chicken. You're going to eat rare meat, or not rare, red meat, a whole lot more sparingly. Um, and then your sweets and things like that, also sparingly. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of olive oil. Olive oil is super good for you. It is very heart healthy. Um, and also veggies. Veggies definitely fit into that too. So let me, uh, oh, and 
number five, make it yourself. So cadets, watch this whole video, become inspired, and then try and recreate some of these dishes in your home. Just because I make it one way doesn't mean that that's the way you have to make it. When I cook a recipe, I might read 10 recipes for the same type of food and then figure out what I think my family would like. So if it maybe said to put cilantro in it, I'm not going to do that because nobody in my family likes cilantro, whereas you might. So be creative. That's what I love about cooking more than anything. Um, you can, you can feel free to create and do whatever it is that you want with that food. You don't have to necessarily follow a recipe step by step. Some people like that, but I like the freedom to uh, use and experiment with all of these ingredients uh, to create something of my own. So I'm going to stage this a little bit, get things ready, and we'll go into it. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention, um, there is a French term. It's called mise en place. Mise en place means everything in its place. And what that means when you talk about cooking, think about when you go to Subway or Moe's and you say, I want a burrito and I want this and this and this in it. Everything is there already chopped, it's already hot, it's ready to scoop, or it's already chopped and it's cold and it's ready to be added. So that's mise en place and that works especially well in fast food and in restaurants. That way chefs or the person who's taking your order is able to very quickly put together your dish instead of having to chop the uh, tomatoes, chop the celery, shred the cheese, cook the meat. So uh, that's something that I like to use in my kitchen. Um, and we'll just see how it goes. Okay. So let's get started. For our parfait, we are going to build it in this cute little glass, but we are going to set that aside because we have a few things that we have to prepare first. We have a colander because we're gonna to need to rinse our berries, and I also have a knife because some of these strawberries that I bought are, are actually quite big, and I'm gonna chop them up a little bit. So we have the remainder of my fresh raspberries. We're gonna add those. That one doesn't look too good. We're not gonna use it. Then we have some blackberries. Uh, you don't have to use this type of berries. You can use whatever you want. That's the beauty of cooking is you can put in there whatever it is that you like. And then I have some strawberries. Like I said, look at these monsters. They're huge. So I'll probably use maybe those. So let's give them a quick rinse. All right, we're going to give our berries a little bit of a rinse. These did come from the store and I have not yet rinsed them off yet and some nice cool water. Something else worth mentioning, when I cook, I always clean as I go so I don't have a giant mess to clean up when I'm finished. So I always keep this uh, basin of my sink full of some hot soapy water. So as I am done with these dishes, I can quickly wash them and put them over there. So when I'm finished eating, I only have to wash my dinner plate rather than washing 50 plates and pots and pans and other things. All right. Let's start to put things together. Something that I did fail to mention, I washed my hands really, really well before I started touching any food. And I actually wash my hands quite a few times as I cook because I tend to use my hands a lot. And well, they just get food on them. So we'll set those to the side. Here's our cup again. For this recipe, I'm using uh, Greek yogurt, zero milk fat Greek yogurt, no added sugar. It's, it's fairly straight up. It is not sweetened. Some people might not like that, but the fun thing is, is I have some local honey that I'm going to use. So we're gonna get our sweetness from that and we're gonna get our sweetness from the berries. So we'll put a little bit in here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer it. So we're gonna take a couple of those guys. We're gonna take our strawberry too. Make sure you chop off that top and if there's any pit in the middle, you can chop that up too. But I think we're pretty good. So we'll put some more berries in there. Oops. We'll put a little bit more. And this is protein packed. It's so good for you. It's gonna keep you full for quite a while. Let's get it to go down in there. Can't really, it's starting to layer a little bit. 
I'm not going to make a big, huge one because I don't have anybody standing here to eat this except for me. So I guess I'll be eating this. So we have our berries. We have our Greek yogurt. We're going to set that to the side. So now we're going to come in with some granola. Again, this is unsweetened granola. Um, it has some almonds in it. It is super, super yummy. Pretty plain by itself, but again, we have the sweetness of the berries, and we also are going to have the sweetness of the honey that we're going to put on top of here, and it is going to make this a sweet treat. You wouldn't even know that you're eating something healthy. Here I have my honey jar. We're going to put just a little bit of honey. This is fresh local honey. And the lovely thing about local honey is it can actually help you with seasonal allergies if you have them. So just a little bit of honey. Doesn't take a whole lot. And then because I'm extra, I have a little sprig of fresh mint. And there you go. A lovely Greek yogurt parfait. Okay, for our lentil soup, which is also called Chorbot El Ads, which also means soup of lentils in Arabic, we are going to need a cup and a half of red lentils. We are going to need one medium onion, but because my onions are teeny tiny, I'm going to use two of them. Two to three cloves of garlic. So we'll go ahead and pull the garlic cloves out of here. There's one and two. And three. Three cloves of garlic. We're going to need eight cups of chicken or veggie stock. For this recipe, I like to use vegetable just to keep it vegetarian. You can use chicken if you'd like. So each of these has four cups in it. So we're going to use two of those for eight cups. Uh, we're also going to need some turmeric, about one teaspoon. And that is going to give it this the most pretty yellow color you've ever seen. Um, we're also going to need cumin. Um, I love cumin. It's one of my favorites. We're going to use about a teaspoon and a half of that. Once everything is finished, we're going to put a little bit of fresh lemon on it. And also, uh, I have some parsley for garnish. Salt will also go in this, as will olive oil. The type of cooking utensils you're going to need for this, you're going to need a cutting board, you're going to need a knife to chop up the onion and garlic. We're going to need a good soup pot. We're going to need a mixing spoon. And we're also going to need a measuring spoon because we need to be sure that we measure out the right amount of lentils. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our pot and we're going to put about a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil in it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on the stove over about a medium heat and let that begin to preheat while I chop the onions and garlic.
To make our hummus, I have everything that we need ready to go. First, we're gonna start with two cans of chickpeas. They are rinsed and dried. We're gonna put those in our food processor. Chickpeas also go by the name garbanzo beans, and they also, uh, in Italy, are called CC beans, but they're all the same thing. So we have our chickpeas. I have about two and a half medium-sized cloves of garlic. I have one third of a cup of tahini. Tahini is ground sesame seeds. You can find it at most grocery stores. I have the juice of about one and a half large lemons. I like my hummus pretty lemony. Um, again, you can measure this to your taste. Olive oil. A good couple of glugs maybe about a quarter of a cup we can add more or we can add water if the consistency isn't ready yet for our spices I have ground cumin paprika parsley and mint we're gonna add some salt we'll start processing this and add more liquid if we need to how does this go? There we go. It's pretty loud. Okay, so now we're gonna make our falafel. I have five cups of chickpeas that I soaked overnight, and we're gonna go ahead and add those to the food processor. I also have uh, one cup of onion. I have about a quarter of a cup of fresh parsley. I have three cloves of garlic. I have a pinch of baking soda. I'm not gonna use all of it. And then I have my spices. I have salt, cumin, coriander. I 
and we're going to give these all a whir. That's my flower, and we're going to save that until it's time to make our patties. So last we're going to make our chicken shawarma. In this bowl I have eight boneless skinless chicken thighs and I have an onion. I'm going to add that to it. I also have my spices. So I have salt, cumin, paprika, coriander, garlic powder, turmeric, we're going to add that to our chicken and our onions. Also going to add some olive oil. And then I'm going to add the juice of one lemon.
and as promised, here is our final meal. We have our lentil soup. I put a little bit of Greek yogurt in there, which is absolutely delicious. And then we have our Power Bowl. I used some baby mixed greens. And in our salad, we have the hummus that we made. We have the falafel that we made. We have some pita bread to scoop up that yummy stuff. We have our chicken shawarma. It's kind of hard to see it. It gets lost in there. There's some more Greek yogurt. We have some tomato. We have some cucumber and some uh, homemade fresh pickled onions that I made. As my grandmother would say, Sastain ya Elbi. Bon appetit!